what's up, Ross? <laughs> what's going on, Scott? How are the mic levels? Are they all right? Um, are they to your liking? Nah, you still look a little louder, but you are like you have a more forceful voice. I mean, I, I don't see what you're seeing. I'm looking at the well, same cause it's, thing. Well, because it's the same now. Because I adjusted it 14 times. Maybe if you put some energy into this goddamn fucking <sighs> podcast, you'd see, like, the results maybe, in your voice out. Maybe if you didn't pull the fucking energy out of me like you do. So I just came back from my in-laws <laughs> in Albuquerque. I was there for eight days. And... um. It was mid nineties all week in Albuquerque. It's the desert, you know. It cools down during the night. I thought you went to dress style. It was like the mid nineties. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you. Go it ahead. was in the mid eighties in their house, and they have like central air and everything. And they gave us a fan to sleep in at night. Is it a, is it a financial concern or they're just weird? I, I, I don't know. Because my father refuses to this day to use an air conditioner. It could be it could be either of those things because all of those things are true. And he's middle of Queens, New York, and it, it gets fucking hot and steamy. And he's like, this my, this little fan works just fine. No, I don't understand how old people cannot be using air conditioning like in the summer. Well, isn't like isn't there like a whole Seinfeld skit like they're really cold all the time? So I mean, I guess that might be true. You might get cold like as you get older, like you know, for whatever reason. Yeah, I don't know. So, um, oh, I have an update. For so you. the whole point oh. is we're we've transferred. We are actually in the basement, the uh, in the back of actually a garage. Yeah. Of Scott's uh, house. It's our first time in our recording studio, and it's hot as balls. <laughs> and it's we've a work got in a, progress. We've got a fan going, so I don't know what the sound is going to be like. You might hear echoing because what are these? What kind of walls would you say uh, these are? These are uh, poured concrete and uh, okay. cinder blocks. So they're like concrete cinder block walls. They're barren, so the the sound. Like I hear it now as I'm speaking. I hear the sound bouncing think, off the wall. I definitely hear it. I, I think you would like that, though, hearing yourself um, multiple times. And the fan is going. So to our listeners, I mean, really, you should just be happy that we're back with a fucking new episode and stop complaining about shit. You know what I mean? I don't understand, like, why they're constantly complaining about everything. I, 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 I don't know, man. They're complaining to you. <laughs> they're, they're, they're cheering me on. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um. Scott, um, I wanted to say, was the MVP last week. He put out a great best of. That's what I want to talk about. Best of season one show. I got it while we were in the Albuquerque Sunport International Airport because JetBlue blows. <laughs> and um, it's a red-eye flight that was supposed to leave eleven, like 11.45 Albuquerque time at night. Um, it didn't leave until like 1.30 because it was delayed because it's JetBlue and JetBlue is always fucking delayed. Um, the last six times that we've taken JetBlue have been disasters. Really? Yes. I've had more problems on Delta than JetBlue. No, JetBlue has been fucking disasters. Delta always has mechanical problems. I actually watched them tear like the autopilot out of yeah. the cockpit. Like I, close the door if you're going to do shit like that. That's Yo, I was just telling Amy, I hate, like, on planes, like, when you get on the plane and, like, the door to the cabin is open, mm. like, or the cockpit, whatever. I guess we're in the cabin, right? Yeah, we're in the cabin. Yeah. So, when the door to the cockpit is open, I hate, I don't want to see that shit. Like, I don't want to <laughs> think about, like, there's two guys, like, in this little, you want to think it's, like, the most advanced, like, you know, there's, like, touch screens. And it's just, like, airplanes still look like they're, like, 1950s, like, you know, submarine like yeah, 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 tubes with wings. Yeah, yeah they suck. I don't want to think about that shit. All right, good. Well, yeah, I'm glad you're home safe. Like I'm sitting in a chair in, in the, the sky, sky. <laughs> right? <laughs> and everything sucks. <laughs> On the way there, so, the Wi-Fi was out. Oh, it's some bullshit. No, it's at least in, like on at least Chet Blue, you don't have to fly the plane. Sometimes I, I think on Spirit, you have to actually like fly yourself. Well, that's why prices are so low. <laughs> <laughs> you're the pilot. Um, so speaking of that highlight reel, you're going to be very surprised. I only got through five episodes of it because the record man, the editing t when you edit like that much of it, yeah. it takes forever. Yeah, and you know, I wasn't good at it either. Yeah. So I got five out. It was like two o'clock in the morning. I said, let me post it. Mm -hmm. Um. Since then, I've done all 11 episodes. 
and I compiled them last night, and I'm going to upload them today. I'm going to overwrite the old episode. So anybody who's listened to episode 32 already before August 15th, 2022, listen to it again because it's an hour, an hour of non sequiturs, man. It's an hour of us just talk, like sounding like idiots. No, that's great. Um, <laughs> that's great. And I got to tell you, this might be a conversation that we should have had off air, but since you brought it up, I don't know that we should release it for free. I think like we should make it like you know like uh, a donation basis. Uh, why don't uh, we? I feel bad because I already like released half of it, and so I, I felt like it was a half-assed that's job. Like a taste. So no, no, no. How about we give them the whole season one, and I'll start working on season two while you work out the logistics of how do we charge people for our shit? Because I don't, like, I don't know how to do that. Right. Okay. I mean, yeah, I guess we release. I feel like I feel like I released a half-assed product. Yeah. You know, in the rush to get it done. And then, I mean, and I gotta tell you, it takes me like a night to do each episode. I was listening to it and it sounded really good. Yeah, it wasn't the choppy editing I did like the first time. Like, no, it, it I, took a lot longer to. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed listening to it, and it was thrown together last minute in lieu of like us being able to record the episodes that were necessary before I went away. Then you, of course, got COVID. Yeah, that so, was fun. Yeah, how was that? Yeah. <laughs> I still haven't uh, got. It. I mean, I, I went two I and a half years ha- without getting it. Yeah, no, like we as might far have as had you know, it. Yeah, you right, didn't get right, it. right. Um, so everybody out there who hasn't had it or has had it, just share the experience. Uh, I was, uh, I was fully vaccinated with the Moderna, and I got one booster, and I was contemplating getting the second booster. Um, I feel like. What are you like? You're telling everyone your Twitter profile? No, man. I'm just letting people Why don't you know. Let it's everyone a, know your it, pronouns. It's a public. Too, it's a public it. health crisis, and you know, sharing information is important. Okay, go ahead. What the <laughs> fuck did you ask me for? Then? Go ahead, no, go ahead. So I could, so, so yeah, I could do this. So I could <laughs> set you up for like fucking ripping into you. Now you, now you know what it feels like to be gaslit like that. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Scott, why don't you share some shit, and in three seconds, uh, I'll talk about how boring and stupid <laughs> it is. So anyway, woke up at like four in the morning, lots of chills. It was like 80 degrees out, 85 degrees out, and I was freezing. Fell asleep again, woke up with the chills again, went to go down the stairs when I woke up, mad muscle aches. Um, halfway through the day, I said, let me try a flu pill, like something from Walgreens or something. Knocked out the fever, knocked out everything. Next day, woke up, same symptoms, took a flu pill, went fine. Third day, didn't bother taking a pill. Fourth day, I had, like, no symptoms. Right. Just fatigue. At what point did you know it was COVID? Oh, when I woke up that morning, I was like, I, I took a test right away. You took a test. I took a home test. I was going to go, like, to the, uh, get the, uh, you know, the laboratory test. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I have it. And then I, but I had two different home tests. So I tried a second home test, and they've also came up positive. So, yeah. And I was, I, I tested positive for nine days. On the ninth day, I was negative again. You survived. So, yeah. So you had a cold, basically. Yeah, you were it was sick. basically. Yeah, it was. Like, but it was. It was three days. That was it. Yeah, you were sick. Oh, oh, oh. Wait you had a, a cold and a horrible headache. Yeah. Horrible headache. Yeah. But um, you were sick. I I never once coughed. Never lost my breath. Never yeah. felt winded. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm also a fucking athlete. You know, I'm a right. fucking star athlete. So I guess World here's class athlete. Here, here's my question about COVID. And again, this is a very sensitive topic because no one can have like a, a rational conversation about it anymore no. because of how everything was handled in the beginning. So here's my question. At what point does it seriously start being treated like it's a nuisance and not like quarantine situation? In other words, I think we're when, there. when people had like colds, right? Yeah. No one, like, the CDC guidelines weren't to quarantine for fucking five days. Well, because those type of coronaviruses were nothing like COVID-19. So that's <laughs> the question. So are we there yet? I think we're almost there, man. CDC just changed their guidelines again. They don't even recommend quarantining. They just say wear a mask, which is the hardest thing for anybody well, to no, fucking th- do. not true. I, I, I misinterpreted it also. What they're saying is... If you've come in contact with someone, so you called me up, you were like, you know, you did the right thing, you did the responsible thing, because we were hanging out, uh, our wives, like with our wives, what actually, do you, what do you we call all went it, out. Um, what do you call that? Uh, contact tracing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you call me up, like, you know, like a disgraced, like, sexual partner <laughs> that just got diagnosed with, like, you know, the oh. clap, and you've got to call everyone up and be like, uh, you know, I got the clap. you might want to get yourself tested. <laughs> so you call me up. Um, I didn't get it. Uh, Amy didn't get it. Nobody in my circle got it. 
Nobody. Yeah. But it's like, so the CDC, what they recommend now is for someone in my position, I was hanging out with you. It used to be I had a quarantine right. until True. I tested. Now they're saying now don't even quarantine. If you do get it, they're saying five day quarantine. Gotcha. All right, quarantine. So, like so that's ten. what they're saying still. Um, but you don't have to quarantine if you've been in contact with someone unless you test positive. Good to know. Good to know. So it's like, so what's the point then? So like I could be out there. You are. Positive, which I'm not. <laughs> but I mean in terms of coronavirus. Right. Um, and uh, none would be the wiser. Mm, none true. would be the wiser. I well, could have gotten on that airplane. Listen, I honestly believe I caught coronavirus. From some asshole who knew they had coronavirus and didn't want to fucking take any precautions. You think so? Absolutely. I don't want to hear this asymptomatic bullshit. I don't Come want to hear on, it. Come man. Nah, man. You don't know. People are fucked up. You don't know. It was people, it was someone that didn't take it seriously all these years. They didn't care. I mean, again, it's become like You're a, right. I don't know. It's become a witch hunt. It's become like this thing where you it becomes stigmatized. Like, you're almost ashamed to say, like, you had COVID. You know what I mean? I'm disappointed that I got it. I let my guard down. What, like, what does that mean? You like that's like getting a cold and being like, I'm nah, disappointed. Man. I caught a cold. Nah, and you know how I, I get sinus? I got the deviated septum, so I get, used to get sinus infections all the time. Yo, when COVID, when we all started quarantining and masking up, yo, I didn't get a sinus infection for three years. I usually yeah. get them four times it a was year. Great. Sure. So yeah, it was great. But at a certain point, you also get sick. And tired of wearing like a mask everywhere. Let's I, be listen, serious. Dude, that's fine. But I will tell you this. I was out with my father. We went to ready for this? During, since COVID started, eighty four different bars and breweries. Since COVID started. Okay. And that took me two and a half years to get sick. Yeah. Catch something. So right. And we had to wear masks where it was appropriate. And we still had, went, out, went out and had a good time all but the time. But you were distanced, right, in all of these places. Yeah, most most of the time, yeah. 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 I mean, it's a complicated situation, coronavirus, and I just wish, like, Donald Trump had handled it better, but of course he didn't because he's a fucking incompetent idiot. And, by the way... You fucking leftist son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to be fucking Fauci with, like, four administrations worth of fucking... So, again... So, Come on, man. Right, so I know what you're doing, and I know you're not serious, but that's the problem, right? Everything's binary. It's like, if I say something bad about Trump, that means that I must, like, fully yes. support, yes. like, Fauci. Like, get out of bed with AOC, all right? Yeah, because well, when you're no, done. Yeah, nothing's nuanced. Everything <laughs> is either this or that. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, so coronavirus, unfortunately, is a complicated issue. You know, people have a hard time talking about it. Everyone has dug in their heels. And it's also, by the way, shown us how incompetent and unreliable our, like, entire, like, system of government oh, is. Like, we can't handle absolutely. crises. No. Like, we can't handle, like, Katrina couldn't handle that shit. Sandy couldn't handle that shit. Now we have a pandemic. You know, we certainly can't handle, like, global warming. Like, we can't handle anything or climate change, however you want uh, to Let's only talk it. about things that are real. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> there, There is a scientist who disputes <laughs> all of those things. Uh, so yeah. you're right. Yes. And there are, you know, economists. There is an economist who believes that trickle-down works. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. People believe this book we're reading is real. The Let's Bible. get to this book, yeah. But um, you want to get to the book? I want to. Uh, I want to pause this just for one second, if I could. Scott's gonna pause. Interesting. All right, we were just checking some technical stuff, but um, Scott wasn't sure about the line. Yeah, that, it was supposed to be red that or green. Marks off the time for recording. Yeah. So numbers, man. Numbers one through four. We didn't have a previously on, so let's just recap that shit. Like, there was nothing interesting in that. I don't even right? remember. I feel like yeah. I'm so tired of them being at the base of Sinai <sighs> and Yahweh just like, you know. I mean, I get it. He's got to be safe. He doesn't want to get infected. He doesn't want to get like Earth like micro bacterial like shit on him. And he doesn't want his tricked into slavery workforce getting sick either as this episode will display yeah, so again it, he's taking a long time to set his ducks in a row mm -hmm. but the dichotomy of his meticulousness right 
and the Israelites' impatience <laughs> leads to fantastic comedy because like <laughs> while he needs to explain to them right very specifically what they need to do in order for him to stay alive listen stiff neck <laughs> 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 fucking write it down if you have yeah. to so it's like they they can't they, if if shit takes longer than a week like mm. they've lost all their focus they're building idols they're like worshiping other gods they're ignoring his instructions oh my god last week i don't know if you saw the text i texted you that expedition unknown was doing a story about moses mm -hmm. and they did the part where he went up the mountain yeah. and they were supposed to stay true to the god mm -hmm. and they came down and moses was like what the f is going on here and they got the golden yeah. calf they're like well you were gone so long <laughs> what's pretty funny. Uh, what's expedition unknown? it's like it's like a it's like a big I want to see heavy set but it's a big white dude that just like goes to different like locales and like tell like does history lessons oh, it's and... a show yeah yeah I'm like what's expedition unknown and you're like it's a big white guy <laughs> oh I thought yeah I I'm thought like, you, that's the I person's you knew, name I thought you knew it was a show mm. oh it's on like discovery or something okay no, I don't know. It could have been like a YouTube series. I'm not sure, oh, but no. you're old. You don't watch yeah, YouTube series. You don't know about that I shit, man. That shit. Yeah. So my my son, man, <laughs> he watches YouTube shit, and I'm always like making fun of like how terrible like whatever he's watching is. Let me fucking tell you something. It doesn't matter. E even if they're terrible, whatever my opinion is as like a Gen X boomer, whatever you want to call me. These motherfuckers have like 25 million subscribers. Like their fucking videos. I'm not talking about one one particular channel. I'm talking about like like whatever, 10 channels that he watches. Videos are getting like hundreds of millions of views. You understand? Like Johnny Carson, who everyone in this country knew, like 5 million people would watch him a night. Maybe. Maybe 5 mm. million people a night. These motherfuckers have like 25 million subscribers mm. and hundreds of millions of like views. My, my father had a very funny joke about Johnny Carson. He was, uh, he was doing a job at, uh, in Queens. You know, I think, uh, I think Johnny Carson was out of Kaufman Studios in Astoria for a while. Johnny Carson was doing a job in Queens? Johnny Car no, my father was uh. Uh, at Johnny Carson's studio. Mm -hmm. And uh, he walked up to Johnny. Like, he walked past Johnny. He's like, hey, what's up, Johnny? And like, like. Carson was like, do I know you? He goes, you should be. You've been in my bedroom every night for the last five years. And like, he got a good laugh. It's one of the few Johnny things my father. Uh, he said he did. But I, did, I figured if he found it really funny, he should have put something on air, right? He, he should have like invited him on. Do stand up, invite him on. You know over what? There. No, no. He probably did say it on air. We got to check. And my and father doesn't actually watch Johnny Carson. <laughs> so it was just a lie anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't watch Johnny Carson? No, it's been off the air for how many years? <laughs> Yes, at the time, I, I believe he did. I don't know. I mean, everybody. There were only like three channels back then. Yeah. Like literally. And only two in the Soviet Union, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That one old, was propaganda. That old joke. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Scott. Do the joke. Do the no, joke. No, I think we already did that joke once. All right. Um, so we don't even want to talk about numbers? Let's talk. Let's get into it, man. All right, so we did numbers one through four. Today we're going to do what? Numbers I think what? we're going to do, f if we have time, five through eight. We're just going to do five and six, but right. seven and eight really are nothing. Okay. And, I, and I, the coronavirus story kind of led into numbers five, unclean persons. All right, but what was one through four? You said you wanted to do a recap. Yeah. I don't, do do I you remember, remember what one through notes? four was, like I, specifically? I made a chart of like where the Levites stand, up by the tabernacle. Oh, um, yeah, he was setting up like the camp, right? Like this is where everyone like. Yeah, yeah, it was a big, oh, it was a ledger. I got a big ledger in here. Yeah. About like how many people were in each clan yeah. and blah, 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 yeah. and where everybody's going to hang out. Yeah, it's yeah. like he's setting up like um, the mar the marching orders. He's giving marching orders. I got Levites or Aaron's bitches. Hmm. Okay, it's a little harsh. That's this is from Numbers one through four. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> that was it. All right. <laughs> like, so no, no. so let's get on to Numbers five. All right, Numbers five. He basically is telling people, "Yo, put the sick people out of the camp." The leprous, the discharging, and anybody who contacted with a corpse. Yeah. Don't defile. Where I dwell. That's that's the key. Like he doesn't mm -hmm. care like for other people. He's like, just keep that sh keep the cooties away from me. He let that shit slip. That it was not about everybody yeah, else. It's not bullshit. He's really concerned and that, that, about himself. Simple. And again, why did the CDC not have some jerk come out during coronavirus and go right in in numbers five quarantine? Yeah. 
You're talking about like when uh, Trump was running the CDC, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm everyone, just saying when it happened. Man. I'm just saying everyone knows that Trump was Jesus's choice of candidate. Yeah, so uh, I guess these people were supposed to die. Right, like Jesus is a Republican. Uh, <laughs> I would think so, yeah. You know, because he's so white. Yeah, except for like all the wealth redistribution. <laughs> like, you know, the people he worked with and like, you know, like his hatred of like rich. And I don't really know that yet. Yeah. Here we go. All right. That five, uh, numbers 5-5, five, five, confession and restitution. Should I just speak? Because like, just honestly, like, I felt like confession. I was surprised when I read that because I felt like confession was a Catholic thing. So, so did was, I actually? It yeah. was surprising, but I don't think he means to a priest. Like he just says, like the first thing you want to do is like admit you're wrong. So like if you, oh. if you fuck someone over, like admit it. Like be like, yo, Scott, you know what? Like yeah. I'm sorry, I stuck yeah. my pinky in your wife's ass. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. I apologize. Yeah. So now I'm gonna pay you back, right? You could stick your pinky in my ass plus another 20%. Well, wait, wait. Does that mean your wife has to be 20% bigger? <laughs> or I no, have to I think like, 20% so if more? I stuck, if I stuck a pinky in your wife's ass, you get to stick I think, maybe like a thumb in my wife's ass? I think we might want to figure out why we don't have any like too many female <laughs> listeners. <laughs> this, this could be why. <laughs> Whatever, like I haven't they, checked the stats in like a while. Like, they don't like fingers in their ass. Uh, I mean, come on. They, no, they just don't like you talking about it. We know what's going on. Yeah, we know. Um, 50 years old, I have no clue what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old and scared. <laughs> <laughs> I am George Costanza. Um, yeah, so it's you got to make restitution. You got to, like, basically admit you're wrong, make restitution, plus one-fifth right, on top of that. Saying. Like... Like that is measurable. Well, it's funny because he mentions if there's if there's no next of kin to give the restitution to. So wait, wait, wait. Are we just talking about you stole a goat or like you killed a dude? It's very vague. It's if you did wrongdoing on someone. That's what I'm saying. If you did wrongdoing, if you stole five apples, you give back six apples, right? Like that's because you you give back the five plus a fifth. Right. Okay. Yeah. But what if, like, it's something Math. else? Like, what if I borrow your car and I drunkenly, like, f- I don't know. There's, like, some things that can't that aren't quantifiable. The car was a bad example because you right. can't put a price on, the, on a car. But what about the six families you ran over? But, again, over? like, what if I, like, slept with your wife? Like, what is restitution plus a fifth? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's weird, you know? I don't know. But um, it comes up. <laughs> like, do I get to bang your baby? I'm saying that's like a fifth, you know? It's like a little, like a little baby or, or a cat. Uh, uh, Maybe a cat. Um, <laughs> um, should we pause this again? <laughs> okay. And if you have no I just want to the, know who I'm banging, Scott. If you, if you have no, no one to give the restitution to, you give it to the priest along with the Ram of Atonement. Yeah. And they say nothing more about this Ram of Atonement. I think that might be a metaphor for sex. A Ram of Atonement. I think you might see sex everywhere. It's like, are you like, you're sexually paranoid? I mean, it's basically, <laughs> it's like a scapegoat, I think. It's a ram everywhere. of atonement. It's like the scapegoat. Mm. Hmm. Atonement. You ram your the toe. Ram in a, of atonement. And it feels mint. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. So let's get on to more important things. <laughs> Numbers 5, 11. Concerning an unfaithful wife. All right. This is awesome. It's awesomely awful. No, it's it's a great section. All right, you wanna you wanna run with it? Or? I mean, basically. So let me give you the the broad overview, and then I'm sure you have some notes that you might sure. want to go into details about. So basically, I don't even know why it starts off with like if your wife is unfaithful, because then it's gonna go into like a whole long section, even if she's not unfaithful, but you think she's unfaithful. So really, the section could be totally narrowed down to yo. Bring your wife down. <laughs> We're going to give her some, like, toxic water, right? Yo, some, like, vinegar or, like, what a bitter crazy. water. This is crazy. Right. And um, if she has been unfaithful, her uterus will fall out. Holy <laughs> But if fuck. she's been, you know, if she's been, you know, completely monogamous, everything will be all right. 
Yeah, it's great. It specifies that um, if she's been unfaithful, bring her before the priest. If she's been unfaithful, but nobody caught her being unfaithful, bring it to the priest. Mm-hmm. If you just think she might have been unfaithful, yeah. or if you just get jealous yeah. in any way, yeah. just bring her before the priest. Yeah, just bring her down, man. And then he puts her in front of the Lord. He dishevels her hair. Do you think he dishevels her hair? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Dishevels the hair, and then... <laughs> Well, Here there we is go. something to be said for, like, you know, that sexy, like, bed hair. Like, it's, like, post-coital, like, yeah, you know, head. ruffled. I woke up like this. <laughs> um, yeah, so you have to bring a grain offering of jealousy, a grain <laughs> offering of remembrance. Like, add to the list of fucking offerings. It's, it's just a scam to get more food and fuel. Yeah. It's like, it's whatever, man. You know what I think it is, the more I think about it? I think Yahweh... And the people that he's with, they have needs. And this is just like a way for them to like find promiscuous women. It's like women that put out or like people think put out. So they're like, bring them down, you know. And uh... So there's going to be all these grains and stuff. And the, uh, the, the priest is going to hold the water of bitterness that brings the curse. Yeah. You think that's a uh, code for semen? No. No. I, I know, I, I'm pretty sure I know what this I mean, is, but I'll get to it. It's some kind of poison. It's some kind of yeah. like abortion. Right, it's the day thing. after pill. Yeah. Uh, read the oath she must take. Oh, <laughs> I just Joe Biden this. <laughs> it was the teleprompter. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to read that part. I was actually supposed to read the oath. <laughs> but I ain't ready for that, man. I'm not ready for that. Well, anyway, she's supposed to take some sort of oath, like if she has not sinned, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And um, basically... Yeah, if she didn't sin, she'll be fine. Yeah. If she did sin, her uterus will fall out and she'll never have children again. Yeah. Yo, it's an abortion. It's to make sure, like, she's fucking around. She's not going to have some other man's baby well, it's, now. It's more like a hysterectomy. Well, it's like an abortion with a hysterectomy like side effect. Well, I would say... Well, both. <laughs> <laughs> I would say calling it an abortion with a hysterectomy is like saying, I'm going to shoot you in the head and kill you, but that's like putting you to sleep and then killing you. It's like no, it's like yeah, one all right. supersedes the other. All right. all right, it's 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 a harsh. It's a. I just want to say abortion because of Roe versus Wade getting yeah, overturned. Yeah, I hear you, but it, it's it's worse. It's it's worse. Yeah, but it's, it's pretty much it's worse than an abortion because it's like what they used to do back in the sixties when they used to like tell women like they used to put like those IUDs in them like if they mm. were like in court and they were like so they were like control. If they oh, can have okay. kids or not, you right, know, like right. through their like sentence. So that's what this is like. This is yeah. Yahweh controlling like the, yeah, the reproduction, want... the reproductive organs of women. I wonder. I wonder what the, the Bible thumpers feel about that, or they forgot about this. Part. I mean, it sounds like you know God's plan. We don't understand God's plan, Scott. Of course, we do not. Yes. How many times you hear that bullshit? I don't know, but then he said, uh, like, uh, you're going to be ex- execration, execration to the people. I have it highlighted, but I never looked up the word, so. Spell it. E-X-E-C-R-A-T-I-O-N. Execration? Mm. I don't even know what that word is. Mm. Oh, you don't even know what it means. Fuck, probably nobody knows what it means then. We better fucking ask Miriam <laughs> Webster. I say that? I said even I, did I say that? <laughs> of course you did. I didn't even realize. That's pretty funny. Uh, uh, listen, I'm arrogant. What do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> Brings us to number six, the Nazarites. Yeah. So this seems to be like a like like a fraternity. You like uh, what do you call that when you 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 joined the fraternity once, right? I pledged a fraternity. Pledge, pledging. That's what I meant. I mean, pledging. Like you have to pledge to be a Nazarite, and you have to like, go through this whole thing where you can't drink wine, no strong drink, no that's wine. That's like vinegar. the opposite of pledging a fraternity. <laughs> oh, yeah. In a fraternity, you have to drink like a lot. <laughs> drink until it's almost a felony. Yeah. <laughs> uh, other vinegar. You can't drink any grape juice or grapes, and you can't cut your hair yeah. while you're going through this uh, uh, hazing period. Corp, uh, well, it sounds like you're making yourself holy. Yeah, and you can't go near a corpse again. And course. remember, what's holy? Clean. Clean. Yeah, right. Because you can't go near a corpse. Right. So don't introduce like these like substances into your body. You and know? once again, he says, if somebody in your family dies, you can't go near them either. Sorry. This is part of the sacrifice right. to become Even a Nazarite. Because he did make an exception for like Levites. Remember like priests 
Like he did say priests have, like if someone close in their family dies. I think Levites were uh, going to be in the end a higher rank than the Nazarites. Okay. So they probably have like a more um, detoxification okay. process okay. or okay. something. All right, fair. So like the the Levites are like the cardinals, and these guys are just like like the lowly like monks, like right. I got to tell you, when it comes to and by the way, the first four letters are Nazi. I was going to point that out, but when I read it first, I was going to point it out, but I forgot that I was going to point that out, so I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. So you know yeah. who might be a Nazi the more I, I research him? Oh. Jordan Peterson. You know who Jordan Peterson is? I do is? not know who Jordan Peterson really? is. Really? Yeah, enlighten me. He's a very prominent figure that like came into the forefront in Canada. He was like a professor of psychology in Canada. And he came to the forefront like seven, eight years ago. Uh, Canada like updated their laws on transgender people where they wanted to like include them in their constitution, like giving them civil rights. Like basically their version of the 13th Amendment. You know how in this country, the 13th and 14th Amendment like give like guaranteed rights to like... Any citizen of this country, meaning like that was like the official abolition right, right. of slavery. So they kind of wanted to add something like that for like transgender people. So he came out, he threw like a hissy fit. Like he started arguing semantically about what does it even mean, transgender, and I'm not going to pronouns. And, you know, like he was just being like he threw like a fit. You know what I mean? And it's like, bro, you're like a fucking college professor. You know what I mean? Like make your shit as like welcoming as possible. Like even if you don't disagree, even if you disagree, you're still in a professional setting. You know what I'm saying? But whatever. That's neither here nor there. He parlayed that into like this whole self-help thing, right? And on top of that, he's like an expert on everything now. He's an expert on um, global warming. He's an expert on transgender rights. He's an expert on like everything that you, and all of his positions are from the right, but yet he completely fucking denies that he's on the right he believes in like these hierarchies. He believes in wealth distribution, but he says, well, you can't do anything about it, so there's no point in talking about it. He equates everything like to net, like he, he discounts like any kind of human agency mm-hmm. and says like everything is like programmed by nature already. And he compares us to like lobsters. Like his whole thing is comparing people to lobsters and, um, there's a whole bunch of problematic shit and he's one of these people that like when you confront him about something he says he'll argue like semantically well that's not exactly you know what I mean like that's not exactly what I said so like you can't even argue with him so he's one of these people where he's wrong about almost everything but you can't like say anything to him because the second you have a debate with him he starts debating like semantically about the language that you're using and how he can't understand what you're saying because <sighs> like he never said, and it's like. Are so, you in good faith, you jerk? Yeah, no. Well, he, he doesn't want to, but he's made a cottage industry of like incels. Like he, he basically markets <laughs> the incels. And, like, We're coming for those guys. <laughs> And like disaffected, I mean, for our audience, <laughs> disaffected young like males who really never found their way in the world, you know, because like the shit's like fucked up for them, you know. For many like young men, this is not the time to be like alive for them. Like mm. it's already difficult economically for the entire generation, mm. you know. Do you feel like you've found your way in the world? No, not at all. But more so than they have. (laughs) Not at all. Sure. I mean, I have a family. You know what I mean. What did we? What what did we? Why were we still talking about this guy? Um, I don't know. We were talking about (laughs) something, and I brought him up. Something, something Bible. Something Nazi. Oh, he's a Nazi. Nazi. Yes. Yes. And he's he he does like a he a lot of his like philosophical like baseline comes from people who inspired Nazis. He oftentimes brings up, like, Hitler, you know? And he just, I don't know, he's got, like, this vibe about him where I could, like, eh, it's like something This is what I'm going to do. Now that I have my own Twitter account? So I'm not saying he's a Nazi, just to be clear. No, no, I'm saying it when I go on his Twitter. (laughs) 
<laughs> Under your <laughs> Under my, Yeah, okay. <laughs> His, tw- what'd you call it? His tweeter? <laughs> yeah. So Jordan B. Peterson. I'm surprised you never heard of him. Yeah, well, you know. He's, he's like one of the leading, like, quote-unquote thinkers of the right movement now. Oh, that's just... And it's completely it's wrong and embarrassing if you listen to it. So, okay, so just really let's touch on transgender for a second. Um, so whether he believes they exist or not, he's opposed to legislation that grants them equal rights under the law? So he that's not what he said. He turned Oh, it, I twisted his he words. He turned it into a different argument. Uh, no, no, no. Okay. His argument... So he argued in bad faith. His argument was... If he refuses to use their preferred pronouns, he was going to get put in jail. So he was making a free speech argument like that this law was going to prevent his right to free speech. And that's not at all what the law was. And the law was enacted and he continues to like um, dead name people and he continues to misgender people. And he doesn't get arrested because that's not what the law was. So he they're coming. Like, they're coming for your language, he man. He argued in bad faith. that got him. On, he's he's already he already has opinions about everything. But the problem mm. is, he spouts his opinions like they're fact. Like he right. just he's like very matter of fact. Like because the lobster behaves like such and such, does, you could see the parallel with humans. Does he talk like like, like a Peter Navarro? Like he's doing this shit with his hands a lot. Does he fucking no. talk with his hands? Oh, because no, those people fall that. for no. that shit all he the time. Do that. They're like mesmerized. Like it's like a shiny well, object. He's, he's Canadian, right? So he's like, <laughs> do your Canadian voice again, man. That was his good. tone is like he, he he's kind of like mousy. Oh, I like the one when you like. Oh, it's like the Swedish chef, right? Well, however you did it, you do better accents. Like Canadians, you mean? Yeah, like you, Canadians are just like. Think about like someone who's missing their entire brain, and they're just nice. <laughs> That's like what I think of like when I think of Canadians. Dude, not cool, Shout man. out the soy boy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Great, we lost our one Canadian listener. Thanks. Yeah, so uh, a Canadian's uh, like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> That's all I wanted to hear was the voice. I didn't want to hear the insults. Oh, uh, no, I can't do that without insults. Uh, People are going to get insulted, Scott. Yo, so the Nazarites, like if you're pledging for that, and you accidentally get hit by a corpse. <laughs> like... When somebody fell out of a plane or something. In fairness, I'm assuming the Nazarites are going to be working closely with the Levites, and the Levites work closely yeah. with Yahweh. And when you're working closely to Yahweh, there's going to be corpses. Oh, shit. I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, corpses might be flying around. <laughs> you just happen to be standing around, and an anvil squishes the guy yeah, next to I you. I mean, it's a job hazard. Grand piano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like working for uh, Hannah and Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you get hit by a corpse, you're allowed to go into like a, you get to reset your hazing period. You got to start over, you got to get cleaned, you got to like, got to shave your head again. Go back into go... your buffalo stance. Nice. <laughs> remember that terrible song? By Nina Cherry? Oh my God, that song was How do I remember? Fucking <laughs> awful. I don't know. <laughs> I don't <laughs> Uh, Buffalo. Yeah. 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 All right. So once your consecration is complete, you know, once you're fully cleansed and you got through the phasing, you got to bring a whole lot of food and drink to the priest. Again, it's just like, this is like, um, what do you call it? Um, Scientology, where you got to pay for the different levels. Yes. So you got to bring a bunch yes. of shit to move up on the yes. levels. Yeah. So, yeah. And then they cut your hair off and then they burn it. Like that's is that is that is that an aroma pleasing to the Lord also? Well, they burnt hair stinks, they dude. They aren't, and it's like hair that hasn't been cut, right? So they haven't been cutting their hair for like it's accumulated all kinds of like. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how long this va- this period is, but they, they could be birds nesting there. Uh-huh. Huh. And then they do an elevation off- offering, and then they're allowed to drink wine. An elevation offering, and they hold it up to the camera. Remember? Yes. Look, we got it. We got the hair off. 
Um, so now they can drink wine. And I didn't know, does it mean like after just now they can drink wine? Like, hey, congratulations, you passed. Let's have a drink. Or now they can just fucking get shit faced anytime they want. Maybe it's like uh, Mickey and Rocky's training, you know, like you can't drink. It weakens the legs. You know, so it's like <laughs> while you're like in training. <laughs> We're just consolidated meets room. <laughs> and what's funny is like Rocky. He already told Adrian, he's like, you know, like, I can't have sex with you because I'm in training. And then the very next scene is like, he's like, hey, Mick, come on. Like, can I do it? And Mick's like, no, they weaken the legs. And Rock's like, come on, man. But it's like he was just telling her he's not going to. And I like the fact that Adrian was a super shy chick. And yeah. then, like, by Rocky, too, like, yeah. he was, she was like, well, she must have did it right. He must have did it right. Yeah. Speaking of her being a super shy chick, you know that scene is problematic, right? When he takes her to the ice skating rink and then he comes back to her his apartment and she wants to leave and he like stands in the door and he like towers over her and he like puts his like arms above like you know like the door frame and he like spreads like his fucking like lats oh, shit. and he's he like blocking him? her in and Baby he's is cold like outside? no you know don't go anywhere and then he like he grabs her by the face like i mean look in in the standards of 1977 and just like everything we get it like we know that was not how it was meant but like looking at it from today's standards like he's like you know that that was a little rapey was baby is cold outside playing? It was worse. And now, no, now I'm going to fast forward to Rocky Four. Do you remember when he was faced with a dilemma of like Adrian not supporting him to go fight Drago and he gets in his fucking Lamborghini or Ferrari sure, of course, and he starts playing the, No Easy Way Out? Yeah. They start showing clips from the movies, all the movies, and that clip's in it. Yeah. They're singing No Easy Way Out and he's blocking her oh, exit. Oh, shit. I don't know if it w- coincided with the lyric, but I'm totally going to. Um, Amazon Prime that tonight and yeah. find out. Well, probably not gonna do that. In any event, that movie, man, I cannot watch the end of it without like tearing up. When like the first one, yes, <laughs> when he's like screaming Adrian because he doesn't give a fuck. Like they're literally reading off like right. the cards, right. the judges' cards. You don't even hear it because uh. that's not what's important. He just wanted to go all fifteen, and he did. And now he only wants one thing. It's Adrian. Like, that's the movie. Like, the movie's is about, Is it Adrian like, or the sex that he's not been having nah. with Adrian because it weakens <laughs> his legs? You're sullying it, man. Sorry. You can't <laughs> sully Rocky. You can't sully it. All right, and well. that goddamn scene when he's, like, screaming Adrian and she's, like, running through the crowd and, like, fucking the music starts... You know, I like how they did. did she deeks the cop like Paulie, like well, Paulie like lifts holds it up it. and she sneaks in behind yeah. the cop. That whole like scene, man. Like, I don't know. You have no emotions if that shit doesn't like get you. If you've seen the whole movie, right? If you watch the movie and that scene doesn't get you, then you're not a human being. And if you got through six movies and you don't get emotional at the end of. Um, about Rocky Balboa when he's leaving also the ring and not listening to the verdict because he went 10 rounds with um Scott knows how to ruin a good thing. <laughs> Scott will go see Rocky 30. If like they're still <laughs> making Rocky movies, he will go see Rocky There's 30. There's no air on Mars. <laughs> and he will and the thing I love about Scott is he will justify like why it was good. Like he will like make it good. You know, maybe like 10 years later he'll admit that it was shit. <laughs> But, like, in that moment, he will force, like, his brain to, like, think that it was good. How was the Roger Waters concert? It was, um, yeah, so Roger Waters on Saturday night, a couple nights ago, and it was not his best show. Why? What made, was um, it the selection of music or? Oh, first of all, he, yo, it was crazy. You know what song he led with? Comfortably numb. Okay. But not the version we know. Okay. He, Interesting. He, he did it like almost, not an a cappella, but like with goofy, weird, like eerie music behind it. Okay. There was no guitar solo. Okay. Um, He did Shine On You Crazy Diamond, the, the second half. Okay. So you didn't. I like that second half. I do too, but it was weird not hearing the iconic do 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 do. Sure. He never did that. Um, it's almost like he's like fucking doing like whatever Gilmore like is known for. He's like, yeah, Let's leave kind that of, shit out. kind of. But um, like some of his newer stuff that I didn't know. There was maybe two songs I never heard before. He's very hard to understand with his accent. 
And he's getting old. He's really? like 70. Yeah, I couldn't. Yeah, he's I really like couldn't. He's like one of the easiest singers to understand because he enunciates yeah. like so clearly. Well, I guess maybe he's getting older. And uh, he did Sheep. Mm-hmm. And I was amazed at how long he could ho- hold yeah. and how high the notes he hit was. Mm-hmm. I was pretty impressed. So he's he still got it. Mm-hmm. I just, uh, I don't know. Plus, um, this 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 I got to tell you, the stadium was half empty. I understand, like, he's a people, you know. It's Long Island. Backed baby. out of his uh, politics. Yeah, and, that's probably. Because when I saw him on Long Island, like, a few years ago, yeah. like, half the crowd <laughs> was, was not into the what politics. What was great? During one of his songs, he had um, uh, a picture of Ron... Uh, a speech Ronald Reagan was giving, yeah. and then it turned red, and everybody's like, "We love you, Ronnie. We miss you, Ronnie. Uh, hey, Reagan!" Yeah. And then, boom, war criminal. <laughs> like, <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, dick." <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but he he prefaces it. If you you're one of those people that says I like Pink Floyd's music, but I hate Rogers' politics, you know, go fuck off to the bar. He doesn't preface it like he puts that shit up he on like it. on he the screens, it, yeah. right? Yeah. There's a pre-recorded like message at the start of the show, and I, I love how people are like, "Oh, he's being all woke." I'm like, every song Pink Floyd ever came out with after Sid Barrett has been a politically motivated, society-driven song, bro. bro. Like, they- "Money" is not a rock and roll song, like you think it is. It's a fucking, it's a, it's a, what do you call that? A, a it's snapshot. A gr- it's, it's a critique a, of society. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Yeah, and capitalism. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I- Rage Against the Machine is on tour right now, and you've got like all these people going to see Rage Against the Machine and being like, why do they have to be all political? <laughs> it's like literally Rage Against the Machine. You know what I'm in the saying? Title. <laughs> like, the guy is literally was a political science major at Harvard when the band formed. Like, what do you think they were about? Yeah, yeah. I, I, fucking people are idiots. Like now it's not cool because now you know. Well, it doesn't look. It used to be. When, it used to be cool. I got the, I got the sign from the wall from the Berlin Wall up there. It says, "Mother, should I trust the government?" These same people were saying that just four years ago, oh, six I'm years sorry. ago. You know what we haven't discussed, you know, by the way, not what I'm we haven't about, discussed I guess. the fact that the FBI <laughs> raided Donald Trump, right? And now all these people who were looking down on the defund people, defund the police, which, again, defund the police is the dumbest goddamn fucking slogan of of all fucking time. You know what I mean? Whatever, you're not going to get like normies on your side. Change the goddamn slogan, you fucking idiots. So stupid. You idiots. Change it. It's not defund the police. It's divert funds to uh, whatever. Find the fucking slogan. Anyway, so what we haven't talked about is how all those people that were opposed to the defund people and were watching cops fucking bash, like shoot people with rubber bullets in the face, watching cops use their police cars as battering rams into crowds. At the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Yes, Watch cops, like, shoving, like, little, like, women, like, to the ground for no reason. Old men. Remember that man in Buffalo? Oh, he resisted, though. It was fucking crazy. So all those people who supported the police for that, right, Mm -hmm. are now planning insurrections against the FBI? What kind of fucking hypocrisy is that? Now what we need to do is refund the police to, to take take this on and arrest these motherfuckers one by one, and your civil war will be one without a shot fire. Yeah, and it's it's weird because the FBI, who a lot of them are already in cahoots with like these fucking right wing like you know fucking mm. types. Now they're like they're beginning to cannibalize each other. Yeah, it's great. You're gonna weed out the. You're gonna weed out. I the mean, ones. listen, the left is cannibalizing itself as well. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. I mean, not awesome because the left is right about more things than the right. The left is right. The right. Uh, yeah. All right. So that brings us to number six twenty-two, the pri- priestly benediction. So we've talked about the women already. Like we're done. Like talking about the women and like you know all that shit. And then we moved on to yeah, the we Levites to the, 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 or the, the Nazarites. Nazarites, Nazarites right? so that was six. Were, yeah. Yeah. So now we're moving on to seven. You're saying? No, no. Six twenty-two. Oh, six twenty-two. The priestly benedictions. Very the short. I'm gonna I'm gonna read this because. Do you know what a benediction is? 
Isn't it like a blessing? I don't know. I don't fucking know. Oh, you know what? I'm going gonna, 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 gonna to highlight Ben. That's how important this is to me. <laughs> like, I ain't even look. Listen, we all know this is just a vehicle for you to get out your... Benediction. Your, uh... Benediction. My poison. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thou shall, You shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them... And I'm, say, I'm reading this because I've heard this in my life. Mm-hmm. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. That's something I've actually heard. I, I, it's like that's familiar. Those words. Yeah. All right. So, so that's a benediction. Yeah, I, I don't know what a benediction is. It'll that be, it'll you be just, on the vocabulary you just read a, an example of a benediction. It's basically like a blessing upon people. All right. I just looked it up. <laughs> the utterance or bestowing of a blessing, especially at the end of a religious service. That's it. Any words about that? So Moses said this to who? The Israelites. All, all the Israelites. All them, yeah. How did they all hear him? There's like 100,000 people. Like, do they have like megaphones? Like, maybe, how, how do they project his may, voice? Maybe they have not. That's why they have not left Mount Sinai. Maybe that as like a natural amphitheater, like a Red Rocks in Colorado. Maybe they got like a structure where like, like uh, the aliens realize that, you know, using sonar or whatever the fuck they would use. If you stand on this rock, everybody can hear you. It's possible. I mean, everything's possible. Everything's possible. Everything's possible. Except the fact that this is God. (laughs) That's the only thing that's not possible. Yeah. So apparently, they don't go into it yet, but I'm sure they're going to. Um, I'm thinking, like you said, the Nazarites are going to be like a lower, no, Levites. They're going to be like part of the, some sort of crew. Yeah. Yeah. They're not as clean. They're not the most holy. But they are holy now. Right. Want to move on to number seven? Sure. The offerings of the leaders. Man, this is a slog. This is literally when Moses finishes setting up the tabernacle, all the leaders of the different tribes make offerings. And then God says to him, all the offerings split them up amongst the Levites and other crews to do their work. So basically... They're going to bring the offerings so the Levites can do their holy work. But don't give shit to the Kohathites because they shoulder the most holy things and they got to carry it by the shoulder. So, but they never, I never heard about them being cleansed. The Kohathites? Yeah. You know what? You know what it is? Because once the ark is like in the crate, you just need the strong dudes to carry it. And they think they're like, I'm carrying the yard. Right, it's already, se- it's hermetically sealed. Right, right, right. Yeah. So it's like, sealed inside, and they bring it they're out. They're the idiots that carried, like, Han after the carbonite, you know? Like, they weren't the ones in charge of, like, making sure right, that, like, right. he went into the carbonite and preserved him in the carbonite. They're just <laughs> carrying the carbonite afterwards. Does this family guy show I used to watch? <laughs> oh, no. What's yeah. it about? <laughs> well, it's a, anyway, they're doing a spoof on... Uh, Boba Fett and oh, okay. Star Wars, and um, the stormtroopers have, have Han frozen in carbonite. So they're walking towards Boba Fett's ship, and Boba Fett goes, "Put Captain Solo in the cargo bay." And the stormtroopers like, "Duh! <laughs> like, where else would I fucking put him?" <laughs> yeah, whatever, man. It was funny. <laughs> uh, All right, Scott, so don't get penisy. <laughs> don't get penisy. Nice. All right, so then it actually goes by for 12 days is going to be offerings. And the leader of each tribe is going to bring their offerings. So the next 12, exactly, the next 12 paragraphs are uh, the, the person who they're son of and which tribe they were from and a breakdown of everything they brought. Literally, this guy brought seven plates. Yeah. It, it was almost like a registry of like a, right. like a wedding gift. Like yes. you had to send thank you cards yes. out to. It was exhausting. Yes. Now, do they do this every time? Let me ask or you, just did, this you time? did you look through it? Oh, yeah. I wrote down every All right. son, every okay. father, every tribe. So there's 12, 12 families or tribes, and it's a list of what they brought over the course of 12 days. So basically, like every day, a new tribe is throwing a party. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. So... Did you compare, like, their parties? Like, w- were there disparities? Like, did one stand out from another? Like, uh, You know what? I didn't. I just saw that they were all, like, kind of similar right. shit. I, I don't, like, did I one bring Corbell Brute, you know? <laughs> but let's just put it this way. You know how we go, like, a uh, chapter 7, verse 2, verse 3, verse 4? 
it's not until chapter 7, verse 84, which I don't think I've ever seen go that high. Because right. this is how long this list of yes. shit was. Yes. Well, what's an example? What are, like, what, are some, what are some things that they're bringing? Um, four silver plates. Okay. Eight gold plates. Right. A 17, partridge. In a pear tree, right. 17 shekels worth it is. 14 yes. gonzos it is. 37 right. quatlus it is. Yeah. Just like crates, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Just bring it, bring it. I'm sure you're showing up. You know what? It's like the line. And like like Karen gets up and goes, the bag. The bag with all the envelopes. And Henry's like, nobody's going to steal that stuff here. It's just like the line of people dropping I shit off. I feel like, all right, here's what goes on. I feel like Yahweh has to go back up to the mothership every so often. So he gives the Israelites these tasks that they have to perform. You know, while he's, like, away doing business. So, like, he's keeping them busy so that they don't, like, start thinking about, like, deserting or, like, going. Not and only that, but, like, we thought, taught it, but, like, he's a middle, he's a, we said, uh, middle office manager. Right. He's, like, also a middle mobster. He's got to kick the shit upstairs. Right. So, like. Right. He just, he just got spent, like, he just spent explaining to the Nazarites, I need all this food. So they brought him like all this food. So he's got to take off and bring that shit up to the ships. Now I'm assuming they're not like in orbit around earth. I'm assuming they're a little further off because if they were in orbit around earth, like people on earth would see the ships the same Especially way with we see tracking like devices the space station and, yeah. and there's no like light pollution. You know what I mean? So like, I'm assuming their ships are big. They're bigger than the ISS. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Right. So they're probably like you know wherever behind the moon. So he it's got it's gonna take him like a day or two to like reach wherever they're stationed. So he's got to like tell the Israelites, all right, over the next twelve days, why don't you like you know you're gonna do this every tribe, and um, or keeping him busy. Yahweh's a mid level gangster. Yeah, and. They're just running shit up on the Levites' credit. Yeah. They're coming in, just coming in the front door. Right. They sold at a discount out the back door, That's right it. up to the ship. Yeah. yeah. And when uh, and when what happens? And when the credit runs out, fuck you. Just bust out the joint. Oh, you shit! You shit got hit by lightning. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Oh, a bunch of locusts yeah. came. Fuck I mean, you! Listen, that's it. Sounds like the Israelites are getting busted out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Especially the women. Well, well, in fairness, in fairness, in fairness, the women deserve it because Eve. We discussed that, though. Adam was the punk. I know. I'm just, I'm being facetious. Yeah. So, yeah, so 784, they have the total offerings. They basically ring up, like, the, the hole for the 12-day party. Then they got they got to subtract expenses. They count the door prize. They count the uh, you know how many raffles did they sell. So on seven eighty nine, Moses spoke with the Lord. That's a lot of verses. It's insane. I'm telling you, it was just like yeah, that's crazy. You know, the whole cupboard of every t- tribe got listed. And then uh, seven eighty nine after the party after the twelfth day, Moses goes in. He goes hangs out by the ark by the mercy seat by the cher- the fat yes. angels the cherubims. Uh huh. And he heard the voice of the Lord. That's where it came from. Thus, it spoke to him. So, like the the, the tense kind of changed. So, I don't know. Maybe somebody they had like a well. I think the writer came in to do this. Didn't it mention that God spoke to him from above the seat of yeah? Like it said something like above yeah. the seat of uh, the ark, whatever the ark. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's so that, that's the above, holographic projector. So right, so that's the thing. Does above mean he's seeing him and he's floating above, or like there's a voice coming from? It made above. it sound like it was just a voice. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So there's like a this speaker time. in the room. There's like a you know an echo dot. Yeah, it's you know what I mean? Like when you understand technology, none of this seems like so fucking like right? weird. Right? Exactly. Bingo! Right there, man. When you understand technology. <sighs> Go ahead. We're gonna do we're gonna do numbers eight because there's like nothing to it. All right. Number eight is the seven lamps. Remember the lampstand? They had to build. They hammered it out of fucking metal and whatever. Basically, yeah. numbers eight says. 
Is it the like lo- one of those Aladdin lamps? No, man. It's like a metal thing that holds seven different candles. Or It's a metal fucking works. Come on, man. The Lord said to Moses to tell Aaron to light the lamps. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a good paragraph. That, that's it. That's the end of that section. <laughs> Like well, wait a second. Thing. Let's not fucking <laughs> underplay the situation. Read that sentence again. Lord to Moses to Aaron, light the lamp. <laughs> All right. So in like a normal world, right? Like in any normal healthy family, those would be very sane instructions and very normal instructions. But in Yahweh's family... People get killed for fucking lighting shit the wrong way. So uh, when he tells you to like light the lamps, I mean, you write it very casually, but it's very high stakes involved in actually lighting the lamp. Let's go back to the Nazarites for a second. Yeah, when sure. he said they couldn't drink or do anything vinegary and you know, like yep, anything. Yep. Do you think that's because they were they going through this cleansing process and drinking alcohol would lead them to making bad choices, foolhardy choices that would make them unclean you know what i'm thinking now i'm thinking whatever he's giving to those women that's like making their uteruses fall out what i really think is plan b drink he's cleaning out the nazarites he's getting them genetically like prepared to like extract genetic material and put it into the uteruses of those women, he, they're like creating like fucking like maybe food for themselves. Put them in the uterus. Like, do you think one day Yahweh's technology is going to advance to the point where he can take that Nazarite code and put it in the uterus of, let's say, a woman who's never had sex? And then somebody be born and everybody's like, how the fuck did that happen? Yes. Oh, this is some foreshadowing, man. Oh, you're talking about like Christ. Wow, yeah, man. (laughs) Yo, bro, I just think we fucking, we figured it all out. So really what's going on is these goddamn aliens are like taking like, they're basically impregnating, right? They're putting genetic material from a group of Israelites that they've prepared, right, for optimal genetic like extraction no drinking like you know you're gonna lead like this kind of life you're gonna you know all, like all this stuff because they want to they want to have someone give birth to like a very pure, pure. very awesome person yes. which is i think in the future we hear about somebody like that and then they're gonna tell that person yo you're like the son of like you know god uh just convince these people this is how they have to live their life and he'll be like, all right. And then they're going to take off and leave. And they'll, they're going to be like, see you. We're going to come back. We're going to pick you up. <laughs> I like your theory. I don't think there's enough evidence to support it yet. Well, not yet. But it's, it's a good, not like, yet. It's a keep, working theory. Let's keep it in mind yeah. as we go forward. It's a hypothesis. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Now that you've totally given into the alien theory. Yeah. This is, I mean, this it's, it's the most fun. <laughs> it's the most fun to think about. Consecration and service of the Levites. So now we have to clean the Levites, shave their whole body, wash their clothes. They got to be super holy. Then we have to assemble the whole congregation. Now we're talking hundreds of thousands of people at this point, right? And they all have to lay their hands on the Levites. Like that's just weird. They got like they like they like a football team coming out and like high five and everybody as they come through the tunnel. Well, in a way, I guess that's gathering like genetic material, right? So like everyone's gonna touch a oh, Levite. You're swabbing everything now. Then huh? the Levite's gonna go into like the tent, the holy tent or whatever that's called, the tabernacle, and whatever process they've been trained to like undergo, there's probably gonna be a collection of all of that genetic material that Yahweh and his like ill can study. Yo. The question is, what are they going to, is that for the reproductive? That's for like recreating, like, right? Again, there's absolutely nothing here to support your theory, but it's a good start. Yo, they might not even need the goddamn like Nazarites. They might be themselves just creating like they're, they've broken, like they figured out our DNA. Why not? We've just like decoded the entire chain, right? Like we've just uh, decoded the the genome, I, I think. We've just like finished doing that. So, like, why wouldn't they be able to do that, right? Of course. Like, they're familiar with DNA. They traverse the goddamn fucking stars. 
Yeah. Yeah, with the with steampunk technology though. So we don't know how like well, far along it's going. Whatever. <laughs> So once the, once um, everybody lays their hands on the Levites, yeah. the Levites had to go into the tent to give up the samples. Yeah. They're mine now. And he reminds them, reminds everybody why. They're mine now. Uh, I, I added in an alpha, like, oh. like, like I intensity. <laughs> they're mine now. And so he, he remi- says they're mine? He's, they're mine. That's yeah. the genetic material, man. And he may as well be rubbing his hands together and laughing maniacally. <laughs> They're mine. <laughs> so now he reminds them why. Because remember when I killed all the firstborns of Egypt? In lieu of killing all the firstborn Israelites, I'm going to take the Levites. Remember that? He mentions it again, just in case you forgot. My power. See, I, God hadn't been a dick for like two episodes, right? I thought he just killed the firstborn Israelites as intimidation and to show off. No, the Egyptians. The firstborn. I'm sorry, the Egyptians. Yeah. Why? Well, of course he would save the Israelite firstborns because he promised the Israelites. He was doing all that for the Israelites. So why? He, he still says the firstborn of his. He's psychotic. It's, it's just, it's a, it's he's a, really psychotic. So the Levites are going to protect the rest of the Israelites from coming too close into the sanctuary and getting a plague. So Radiation poisoning. Yeah, all that shit. So yeah, they're fucking, yeah. And listen to this. All of a sudden, they, re- they, they reveal that Levites can serve from 25 to 50 only, ages 25 to 50. But after that, they can help out. Like, they can join the reserves. <laughs> But right. they can't be like official Levites. And I'm sure the reason is, by the time they're 50, that radiation has so beaten them down, no matter how much protection they had, they're no longer fit for service. So you can't let them go up out into the population because one of them is going to tell them people what they saw. So like they can join the reserves. So when somebody goes, hey, where's Joey B? He's 51 now. Oh, he's he's staying back. He's a reserve. He's a reserve. Like you never see any of the Levites after age fifty, right? Because they're shriveled up and dead. Or, going with your theory, they're not shriveled up and dead, but like they're reaching like their shelf life. Yeah, and like they'll slowly start deteriorating now. So it doesn't seem like they're dying because mm. of the job, you know? Like yeah. they've already retired, and now they're just old, and that's what's happening. Probably 30 years from now, they're going to be like, have you been hurt by anything? Radiation from an ancient spaceship. <laughs> Call the Yankowitz Law Firm. Yeah. Oh, by the way, one of our listeners reached out to us on Twitter. Not reached out. They tweeted, not to us, to you. They man. tweeted at us talking about how they... I don't know why I brought this up, by the way, either. This is a terrible segue from like what we were just talking about. Um, We're pretty much done with numbers eight, by the way. But uh, they wanted to hear our take on the whole Sal- Salman Rushdie situation. Oh. So well. you know about what happened? I know some crazy guy who wasn't even born like when those books were Satanic Verses was written. Right. He went up and tried to make a name for himself and stabbed him a couple of times, right? Yeah, it seems like more than a couple of times. And like he was on a ventilator. It seems like he's doing... I think he just came off it. I think he just came yeah, off Yeah, he just came off. He seems to be doing better, but I don't know what that means. I don't know, like, how, like, fucking severe it was. But here's the bottom line. The bottom line is, in the 1980s, this guy, Salman Rushdie, wrote a book uh, called The Satanic Verses. Um, I've actually read three of his books. Somebody told me he's pretty good. Um, He's a very good writer. He's a little pretentious. He's a little obnoxious. Competition. Um, I'm not like a huge like fan of his humor. I mean, he's a great writer, whatever. Okay. So I read the Satanic Verses as well. So in the 1980s, he wrote a book called the Satanic Verses and the Ayatollah Khomeini, he was like the big guy. He was like, he's like Iran's uh, George Washington, basically. Okay. Um, he was like the he first, led the Iranian he, Revolution. He or led the was? Iranian Revolution, the overthrow of like the Shah that the United States had installed illegally in the 1950s. Um, so that led to you know like this religious revolution, and the Ayatollah Khomeini put a fatwa 
out right. on Fatwa was uh, like a, basically a death sentence, like a, a bounty, yeah. like a bounty, right? Pretty much a bounty, yes. There was actually a great season of Curb Your Enthusiasm where there's a Fatwa put out on Larry because Larry is going to make a play called Fatwa. <laughs> and he goes on like talk shows to promote it. And he's talking about how like he likes how the Ayatollahs, um, I forgot, condemn, not condemn, whatever. He uses a word and they denounce like things and he... You know, he denounced that and you denounce that. So anyway. Salman so Rushdie. Salman Rushdie. Um, Fatwa out on him. He goes into fucking hiding for like years. Like he's in hiding. And this mm-hmm. is like a period of time where there's like planes being high. Like we live in a post 9-11 world now. So yeah. terrorism is something different now. Yeah. Back then terrorism was like hijackings of planes, right? Like shit like that. The occasional like shit would blow up like the barracks, the Marine barracks in Beirut, like in the 80s. Occasionally some guy in a wheelchair. Under Ronald off. Reagan, by the way. Some guy in a wheelchair be thrown off a ship, <laughs> like a cruise ship. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that, too. Yeah, was that, was that the, Achille the Andrea Dor? No, not the Andrea. Andrea Doria or the Achille Loro, one of them. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, that was all fucked up. So anyway... So he makes it, you know, like everyone like pretty much forgets Salman Rushdie. Nothing happens like no one gives a fuck anymore. He's like out and about. He's marrying like uh, Padma. Like he's, you know, that like model. With the chef. Scar on her arm? Yes. They were married. No way. They were married. Um, Is there yeah. a fatwa out on her for that? No, but she apparently they did not have like an amicable uh, split. She had a gruesome. That's a gruesome injury. Man. I know. Yeah. yeah, she's talked about it. It was yeah. from a car accident. Something yeah, like when that, she yeah. was a child. Grindstone accident. A what? Grindstone accident. Grindstone accident. <laughs> yeah, where, where the first uh, circumcision <laughs> happened. Oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so he was giving uh, Salman Rush. He was giving like some kind of lecture. It funny, funny enough. I was just telling Amy, you know what I want to do? I want to start exploring Western New York more. Like, find, like, a little town, like, near, like, Like Lake Erie. Like, West New York, Jersey? No, like, West New York, like, New York State, you know? Like, where where it's almost like Ohio at that point. So, like, find, like, a town, like, seven hours away from, like, you know, the city. And so, of course, he was in western New York at, like, maybe a college town, but at, like, a college giving a speech. And some guy ran on stage, stabbed him a whole bunch of fucking times. And here's what I have to say about that. If your religion or the clergy of your religion demand blood sacrifice for anything, for any reason, then you got a bullshit religion. Okay. Okay. If your clergy or your holy book or your religion tells you that committing an act of violence against another human being will somehow is somehow justice, then you've got a bullshit religion. Because no divine being, right, that's a perfect being that created everything would allow that because they understand that their creation is imperfect because they made their creation imperfect. And therefore, if they've made their creation imperfect, why would they allow an imperfect creation to try and maintain perfection? Know what I mean? I do know what you mean. And if I could weigh in, um, I don't always believe violence is not justified. If a religious leader calls on like the killing of like somebody who's killing people and somebody who's like crazy and somebody who's like well maybe not crazy but someone who's performing genocide like like if like all the religions got together and said we need to kill Hitler like it's understandable you know what I mean but as far as someone wrote some shit on a book in a book and from what I understand it wasn't I know nothing about it other than it was following like a couple generations of uh, a family in Iran or Iraq or the satanic verses. Yeah. Like it wasn't like, it wasn't like I thought when I heard, heard of satanic verses, I thought it was basically like a devil book, like denouncing Islam or Judaism or Catholicism or Christian. I don't know. So I'm going to tell you real quick. Yeah. So real quick. So Muhammad mm-hmm. was like a traveling merchant he started having conversations with 
Gabriel. Gabriel is one of like God's like archangels, you know, like mm -hmm. one of the most important like angels. And Gabriel started speaking. God started speaking through Gabriel to Muhammad. And that is how the Quran is written. The Muhammad Quran took the notes. The Quran is literally the word of God. Awesome. Okay. So the Satanic Verses is a book basically about this like crude Indian, Indian from the country of India, right. um, South Asian Indian. Um, it's about an Indian like movie star. Who leads like a lecherous life, you know, like a movie star lifestyle. Like yeah. he's banging women, he's drinking, this, that. He's on a plane with terrorists on it. A bomb goes off. He's falling from the sky, right? Okay. So it start, and he, he winds up like surviving somehow. So the book starts off in this fantastical, like it's a fantastical premise. And what winds up basically happening is... He imagines himself like he like he, he imagines himself as like this thing and he's like levitating in this cave. And then he starts having this conversation with this person. And like as like you're reading, he's starting to come to the realization that he's Gabriel. He's the angel Gabriel. So this modern day like oh, actor in Bollywood who's like a regular person, like, you know, just a philanderer, you know what I mean? Can't keep a relationship. He's Gabriel, the messenger of God, okay. talking to Muhammad. And he's giving him like all this like advice, like, yeah, marry like all these women, like, you know, like do this, do that. Wait, 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 wait. This, this this guy who fell from heaven from, from the plane is now giving Muhammad advice. Yes. Okay. So, it's obviously a work of fiction. So it's a work of fiction, and um, this is my memory of it. You know what I mean? Like I read this a long time ago, so this is my memory of it. I think I'm basically right. But the bottom line is this. It was offensive because they took the angel Gabriel, you okay. know, yeah, okay. um, and this, and said that this fucking creep was like the angel Gabriel. How dare he? And like Muhammad, like apparently you can't say anything about Muhammad or. I thought you couldn't depict him. In any, uh, I, I don't guess know in, what I the guess fucking words. rules are because it's too. crazy. You know why it's crazy? I'll tell you why it's crazy. Muhammad himself said, I am not to be... The reason that they say that he can't be depicted is because Muhammad said, do not revere me. But do you see the irony of that? that they revere him so much that they've taken don't revere me to mean don't depict me. So they, they are revering him. They are doing what he asked them not to do. They're killing people who are fucking, like, making cartoons of him, right? Mm. And fucking saying, because he said, don't revere me. Well, what the fuck are you doing, you fucking dummy? So that's my feeling on so, that particular so, topic. All right, so let me ask you this. What's your feeling about, I think he was 24 that performed this heinous act, right? Yeah, well, he's probably a fucking dummy. Yeah, I guess. Well, he's got to be brainwashed. Look, any, anyone that grows up in in modern day America, did he, was he American? Yeah, he grew up in New Jersey. I was think he, he American? Was, I th he was born in New Jersey. He was born in New Jersey. <laughs> he was born. He's his New parents, Jersey. And... His parents, they were from where the fuck? Like they were like from France or something. Okay. And then they moved here. He was born here. So yeah, he he's lived in New Jersey. There, there, so, there, there was a I'm sorry, I said he was an American. He's from New Jersey, right? Right, right. You had said a couple episodes back, like who the fuck knows what goes on in Jersey? No, well, that's <laughs> apparently this is what's going on in Jersey. Um, this kind of shit is being fomented. All right, so my my feeling on it is not um going to be as long winded as Rusty's, um not as emotional, but um obviously I have to agree, like. Now knowing the context of the book, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I feel really bad for a 24-year-old that has come up with such anger, such hatred, 
like, I hate to say it, man. Like, this, maybe this ain't the place for you. But then I think about it. Maybe this is the place for you because America's full of nothing but anger and hatred these days. Well, so the problem is, you know what the problem? But but I'm, I'm I'm sorry. But I don't believe ever is something written in a book worthy of putting your hands on somebody. Yeah. Like just that's just ridiculous. That's the bottom line, right? Words. Knock are it off. No, are not, no no cause for. Uh, don't violence. get me wrong. When words rile up armies. And fucking people to do heinous things, then words can be really well, fucked well, up. Well, words are no longer words. You're not reacting to the words. You're reacting to the to, violence that's right. being. I'm gonna up. tell you something. So, as I was editing the first season of our episodes, you said something very fucking profound, and I'm not it was surprised. so profound I can. Re- yeah, either, well, I, it was so profound I remember it. That's surprising. Okay. You said. I can no longer coddle an ideology that is hostile to me. I thought that was very profound. I was talking about religion, right? You were talking about, you were ta- I guess you were talking about what the, the Bible, all this stuff. Yeah. Because, and it is all hostile to you. It's hostile to me. Right. So but I thought that was really, really good. We, that should be on a t-shirt, man. That should be on our merch. Yeah. We could put that as uh, we could... Uh... Tweet that out and like pin it. You yeah, know what a pin tweeters. Uh, maybe <laughs> if you tweet something and then you keep tweeting, your tweet moves down your timeline. But a pin tweet will stay at the very top. Oh, so the if they want to see any of your shit, they gotta see that shit first. Yep. All right. So cool, we've, man. we've got a pin tweet right now. You're gonna put that up, right? What? No, we've got one up right now. Oh, right, right. Of course. I'm all over that, man. Yeah, I know that. It's yeah. asking people to yeah. like uh, let us know what they think about the show if they've listened to it. It's like begging for friends. <laughs> it's begging for like feedback. And by the way, if you're listening right now, um, please uh, hit us up on Twitter and let us know what your thoughts are on, um, you know, like paying for bonus episodes. Like we will put together best ofs. And charge maybe, I don't know, like I was thinking five bucks. I don't even know how, like, yeah, what do you I was know, thinking, imagine. I was like, thinking like five dollars for like an hour long, like best of, something like that. So let us know, like, if you would be into that. Yeah, all right. So um, once again, I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, um, check out episode 32 also. It's uh, it's an hour long of uh, nonsense, non sequiturs. So um, I think I'm going to wrap this up, man. What do you think? Right. Fuck off, everyone. <laughs> Except our listeners. Peace. Peace.